<laughs> hey guys, and welcome to today's Coffee and Crimes. Oh, you people should see what is said before he presses record. It's really funny. It's always an adventure. Yeah, go ahead. You know, th there's a phrase, <laughs> once upon a time. Once upon a time, th th that phrase gets us ready. Gets us ready to hear a story. Now, generally a fairy tale, but a story nonetheless. You know, there's something about the power of story. Mm -hmm. It just sucks us in, gets us involved. You know, our brains were wired to hear and remember and become engrossed in story. Yeah. I immediately think of Avengers Endgame. Ooh. If ever there was a movie that highlighted the power of story, it was that one. What adventure do you fancy yourself being most like? Do I, which adventure do I think I'm probably most like? Yes. Probably Ant-Man. Ant-Man? Probably Ant-Man. Really? Yeah. Um, he really doesn't do a whole lot. A little bit of comic relief. Occasionally gets really, really big and shrinks back down. Mm -hmm. Seems to be it. I mean, I, I would love to be able to claim to be Iron Man or, or Thor, but it's probably Ant-Man. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just thought. Yeah. Either way, th there within the movie, there's this powerful scene right as... Captain America prepares to battle Thanos, and you hear that voice off in the distance of, on your left, and suddenly, all of our favorite characters emerge. And it's a captivating scene because all of these stories come full circle, and we're captivated by what takes place. Mm -hmm. Stories are powerful, so much so that we felt heartache when we saw the loss of Captain America, and we saw the loss of mm -hmm. Iron Man because we were captivated by their stories. Stories are powerful within our lives. Our brains are wired to remember those stories. And I'm convinced that's at least in part why God presented the majority of his word in the form of story. Now, we don't mean story in terms of some kind of fairy tale, but actual events, but nevertheless, in narrative form. And even the parts in the New Testament and the Old Testament that weren't directly narrative or encased in narrative because within that narrative stream, we're able to find ourselves, we're able to identify, we're, we're able to remember what takes place. Mm -hmm. Perhaps that's why one of the most important things that we can do as Christians is to share our stories with other people. Because your story is powerful, and it captivates people and allows us to identify with individuals, allows us to identify with situations and conveys that God is powerful and God takes care of us. Mm -hmm. But you know, there's a dark side of the story, too. Ooh, and you'd be good at that side. I do like the dark side of Star Wars. Yes. But there's a dark side to story. And that because our brains are wired for story, at times we tend to make them up. Now, we're not intending to. It's just we'll hear certain facts, and then our brains try and figure out how, why that fact came to be. What's behind? What's going on? And so we start to fill in the gaps, or our brain does anyways, with things that might or might not actually be true. We've all done it. You know, we'll see something on Facebook or we'll see something on Instagram. Uh, we'll see something on the news or uh, perhaps a loved one will do something and we'll, we'll immediately think, well, you know, I bet they did that because, or, you know, I bet they were thinking, you know, well, they probably did that to, and we start to make stories up about what takes place. Yep. And it's dangerous because then we become emotionally tied to that story. And if we're not careful, we can end up descending into arguments and chaos over something we kind of made up in our head. Mm -hmm. Brene Brown offers the idea of communicating the story I'm making up, the story in my head, that as we make things up in our head, as we encounter people in their lives, that when they do something that bothers us, that we go to them and say, I'm making up a story in my head right now. I, I think maybe... And that allows the other person to respond of, yep, that's true, or maybe not so much. Mm -hmm. Story is powerful. And we as Christians need to levy that power appropriately. Yep. We need to use that, the power of story to convey to others what God has done in our lives and how powerful he is. But we need to be on our guard to not allow our brains to simply make stories up and then go with those stories and perhaps attack the very people that we love because we've made up a story in our head. Use the power of story well. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you strength.